from the studios of Foxborough Cable Access, located in the center of Foxborough, Massachusetts, you are watching Around Foxborough. Welcome to another episode of Around Foxborough. My name is Jiri Love. I'm your host. Today we have a local guest from Foxborough, and his name is Taylor Ford. And Taylor has been a singer-songwriter for all his life, and we are very happy to have you. Taylor, welcome to our show. Oh, thank you, Jerry. I appreciate you helping me promote the CD. It's something new that I've been working on for many years. And this is just another way of helping people around town, maybe and somebody even further away from around town. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, Taylor, um, I'm very happy to see you today. I know um, it's a Zoom interview, but... Um, I have seen you live at the Confi Kids event. That's originally what, how we met. Do you remember? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the uh, Foxborough Family Favorites a Variety Show. We met there three years ago, at least. Yes, when my son and I were performing, you are one of the performers for Confi Kids at the Marion Rodman Performing Arts Center. Yes, that was a, that was a good, good performance. I enjoyed that. In fact, we met again on the second time that they did that program also. That's correct. So we did <laughs> three years in a row, and we were going to do maybe the third, but pandemic hit so that it didn't happen. Not yet, anyway. They're still talking about it. <laughs> yes. But anyways, so and then I am uh, very privileged to interview you for the Fox Reporter as well for your CD that you just released. Yes. Yeah, that came out very nicely. Uh, you did an excellent job of pretty much covering the information that I was able to provide to you. And uh, I think a lot of people around town liked it. I got some nice comments. Wonderful. So today I want to ask you a lot of question about, uh, questions about your musical life. I know I interviewed you, but please can you tell our audience who you are, how you made your music, and then how you are doing music still, um, and then how you published your CD. Yes. I originally grew up in uh, Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, and I, I think I was lucky enough to live in a neighborhood where I spent all of my youth up through high school and even into college. So I grew up with a nice group of people similar to my age. And we used to pretty much hang out together. And I got to know the people in the neighborhood very well, one of which was the is the gentleman that I collaborated with on the CD songs. There are 23 songs on the CD. And the way we got started, we found, believe it or not, somebody had put a guitar out with their trash on the street. We were out one Saturday morning. We found the guitar. We took it home. We got a little bit of an interest in, in the guitar, but then we decided, why not purchase a couple of guitars? And from that, three of the other guys and myself, we formed what's, what was called back then a folk group. And we auditioned and performed at the high school senior play, which they put on every year. That was our first opportunity to perform. After that, we did a couple of performances at some nightclubs in the local area, which at that time were called folk clubs because folk music was popular when I was in high school. So what we did, we learned the folk songs that were popular by different groups like uh, Peter, Paul and Mary, John Denver, James Taylor. And we also learned some of the Beatles songs because they were very popular at the same time. And as we moved into high school and we went beyond high school, it became more and more of a distance between us because some of us went away to college, some people joined the military. But my friend Philip and I, who grew up together, we met when we were probably five, four and five years old. We decided to continue working on the guitar and we wrote songs. He would send them to me if we weren't near each other. I would write them down. And because I grew up in a musical family, my father 
is a professional, was a professional museum. He passed away in 2005, but he was also a church organist, a church choir director, and he also taught piano lessons in our home. So I was very familiar with a lot of the musical stuff that he was working on. He gave me a basic understanding of music because I took piano lessons from him for about uh, five or six years, just enough to get me through uh, into the teenage years when I, I lost interest in the piano, but I had an interest in the guitar. And uh, from that, my friend Philip and I began writing. And as we did, we needed somebody who would look over the music. I would write it down on the manuscript paper and he would in turn look at whatever I had written down and my father would uh, give me corrections, make a few changes because he was a professional composer as well as a musician in the church. He wrote a lot of published music for church choirs. And that's one of the ways he was able to support his family when I was growing up. So I learned how to sing in the choir. I learned how to play the guitar basically by just buying books and looking at the fingering of the chords. That's how you learn how to play guitar basically. And from that, as Philip and I got more and more involved, we uh, wrote everything down on paper. After my father had compared it and given us the okay, I would ink it, put it in ink. And after that, we'd started recording. So what we have now is a CD I can show you. You can see up close. <laughs> this is a copy of the new CD. It's called Words and Music. And it has both my name and my friend Philip's name on the front. This is available at the Amazon.com. And the easiest way to find it is just to write in search box, words and music, Taylor Ford. And it'll bring it up. Then you can click from that. And from that, you can click on another link, which will show you the songs on the CD. And actually, you can listen to a brief, I think it's like a 30-second CD um, rendering of it, or you can buy the whole CD, or you can buy individual CDs, which are I think 99 cents a piece. The entire CD, if you buy it, is like $9.89. Or you can download it as an e-download, e and that brings the price down maybe a dollar. Now, one thing, one thing else, if you're interested, I decided I wanted to put everything together into a book. So what I've done here, if you can see this without too much glare, this is a copy of every song that's on the CD, plus some additional songs that each of us wrote that, that we didn't put on the CD. And inside this book, as well as all the music, let me show you a page. This is a play, page of the music, which I was able to use. What I did, I took a, a software program called Noteworthy Composer, and I wrote all of the music down in the computer, and then I was able to print it out in manuscript form. So it came out very well. The book is available on another website, which is called bookiemon.com. It's a little more expensive than the CD, of course. It's uh, approximately $53 for the book. So it has a lot of information in it, over 100 pages of photos. It has a pictures of people that I grew up with. It has the notes that we use to develop the songs, the scratch notes, and all of that is, is all included in the book. So that's kind of a, <laughs> a brief history, if you want a brief history. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing that, Taylor. Um, it's really wonderful to hear your history and then how you discovered the music and then how you were still in touch with your friends from childhood and then having to develop the CD together and then have the book. It's such a big accomplishment. How do you feel? Well, I'm glad it's finally out. It took me a while. Um, I think I mentioned to you that I had started actually working on the recordings back in two, 2015 and 2016. 
And I did about four or five versions of each song. And uh, last year, I decided I would pick the best of each of the recordings. And I would put those together and come up with a CD. So I came up with 23 original songs. And I figured that was enough to cover one CD anyway. So you sent us a song video that you actually recorded at the Foxborough Cable Access. Um, so can you tell us about the song that we are going to um, put in your interview? Sure. Let me give you a little more information about the CD first. Our songs all have a theme. These were originally written during a folk music era. But we decided to branch out into different different themes. So I've got a list here I'm going to read to you of the different themes for some of the songs. Ambition, charity, fantasy, friendship, inspiration, kindness, love, memories, motivation, science fiction, teenage romance, and war. So each of <clears throat> Excuse me. Each of the songs, whoops, is based on something that's related to one of those themes. Now, these, the song that you have recorded at the studio is called "Old Man Me." And that's kind of a fantasy song. It's about meeting your future self after you've grown up and almost gone through an entire lifetime. So the story is about a person walking down the street. He meets an old man coming his way, and he starts talking with him. The old man tells him some things about his life, about several different marriages that he's had, about things that have happened to him. And then the person who is talking to the old man begins to unload a lot of information about himself which turns out to be a history of things that have happened to him. And in the end, it takes all night for them to have this conversation. In the end, they go their separate ways. The old man kind of fades away. And the speaker of the song realizes he has been talking to himself, a future version of himself. So that's kind of the fantasy song, one of the fantasy songs. There are a couple of other songs that I also recorded at the studio. And if you want to uh, add those to the interview, that would be good. I'm not sure exactly which ones right now. I know there's probably three more. Well, thank you. So why don't we watch the video right now? Walking down the street the other day, I met an old man coming my way. I told him that I really couldn't stay, but he kept on talking anyway. He told me some things about his life, about his first, second, and third wife. I learned a lot from what he had to say. I told him I was single, gonna stay that way. He looked at me as if to say, yes, I remember when I thought that way. I closed my eyes so he couldn't look in, but he kept on looking and I knew I couldn't win. We sat down together, took a little rest. I began to talk, got a load off my chest. More came out than I thought I could say By the time I'd finished the sunset gray His face had a warm glow, his eyes they were bright Like two sparkling diamonds in the silver moonlight A ah, sigh of relief is what I heard then My sigh of relief is single Amen Parted in darkness, he faded away. 
I stood there in wonder as dawn turned to day. You know, I finally figured out who this old man could be. This vision in time was old man me. Well, thank you so much for sharing that video. And uh, it was very nice to see you perform at the Foxborough Cable Access. It was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, welcome. So, Taylor, um, I know you do music, but before your music um, career um, and then doing the music right now, what was your job occupation? Well, that's another interesting story. I... Uh... I originally went to college in Virginia for two years to be an engineer. I then transferred to the University of Virginia, continued my engineering studies. That was three years. After that, I decided I didn't really want to be an engineer. And that's how I ended up in Massachusetts. At, as my fourth year of going to higher education, I came to Massachusetts and studied photography which was another one of my hobbies. I graduated from a program in Boston. I became a photographer and worked at a photography studio in downtown Boston for about three and a half years. When I left that field, I actually went into the hotel industry. I worked at several hotels. And when I ended that, I ended up working in the insurance business. I went to two different insurance companies. The last one I retired from in 2008. So it's kind of a varied background, but all the while I was involved in music. I was singing in choruses. I was singing in church choirs. And uh, so when I retired, I finally had more time to devote to the music that my friend Philip and I had been working on 30, 40 years ago. And that's when I really got serious about writing everything down and putting CDs together and recording. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And then do you have a website that people can visit or maybe Facebook? I do have a Facebook page. It's under Taylor Ford and also one under Taylor with just the first initial F, which was my original Facebook page. So either one of those should have some information. Wonderful. And um, do you do Instagram or just Facebook? Uh, just Facebook. And uh, website, no website, just the Facebook? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. And do you have any performance coming up somewhere? Are you performing locally? I know it's pandemic, but... Um, do you have any hmm. opportunities that lined up? Right now, I do not have any. As you and I mentioned, we were going to be part of the third variety show at the Maryland Rodman Performing Arts Center. If they decide to continue with that, I'll probably meet you there again and we can talk about that. But uh, right now, I don't have any official performance lined up. So when you are writing the song, sometimes like I do sing the songwriter too, like sometimes yeah. the inspiration comes. So what is your like inspiration? And then when do you come up with these lyrics? Um, like, are you like maybe walking around and then this inspiration comes or maybe taking shower? Like, you know, sometimes like myself, when I'm driving, like some melody and lyrics comes to my head and then mm -hmm. I like, kind of sometimes record and I remind myself like you know the theme or like the motif and stuff like how do you go with the songs uh, that's a good question because as you mentioned there are so many different ways where you suddenly feel a group of words forming in your head and for myself because I have a guitar I can start playing a different chords and see how they fit to some of the words that are forming 
at the same time. But a lot of the, as I mentioned before, a lot of our songs are based on themes. As I mentioned, uh, war themes. We have a couple of songs based on nuclear war, what would happen? Or we have science fiction songs based on maybe going to other planets. Uh, we have love songs based on happy love and sad love. Um, and then we have quite a few songs based on what I like to call ambition or building confidence or sharing, giving people something to look forward to. Um, and all of those words, once I get started with the words, I usually write the words down pretty much, as you know, music is basically poetry set to music. The songs that I do are all poems that I had originally decided to write. And because I had a guitar, I was able to set them to music. And that's basically how it works. But a lot of it, as you say, I'm walking along. I used to walk to work when I worked in Boston. And as I was going to work or coming home from work, I would be running the words over and over in my head. I'd get home, quickly write down a few few sentences or a few verses. And then I would go from there because it would develop a theme. So that's, I think, similar to what you were talking about, is how you write music. Well, thank you so much. So, Taylor, it's been a pleasure having you for a Round Foxborough interview. Would you please give us uh, your last word to the audience uh, that's watching the Round Foxborough? Well, thank you for the interview. I appreciate your time. And I hope everybody watches, especially uh, around Foxborough, because you're doing such a good job there. I've, I've seen some of your programs. And uh, as, as you said, there's ample opportunity for entertainment around Foxborough. And it's good that you're able to help people like myself promote their uh, talents. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Taylor, for being on our show. And thank you, everyone, for watching another episode of Around Foxborough. We are at the Foxborough Cable Access. Our executive director is Michael Weber, director Paul Beck. And if you missed another episode of Around Foxborough, you can go to SCA TV, Foxborough Cable Access, SCATV.org. Click on Video On Demand and click on Around Foxborough. We'll see you next time. <laughs>